The world's population is on the brink of reaching an historic 7 billion, but the growth isn't evenly distributed. While nearly 80 million people are added every year, many countries, especially in Eastern Europe, are actually losing population. One of them, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, has come up with an inventive plan to try to solve that problem. But will it work? Vevchini. This mountain village of tiled roofs and narrow streets dates back to the 7th century. Set in the western region of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, the village feels barely touched by time. Vevchani is a wonderful place. It has everything you need for a peaceful, quiet life. But Amelia Popesca, who has lived here all her life, has watched its population dwindle to 2,500 today, barely more than half of what it was. She worries that Vevchini could be the next victim of a trend that has left empty houses and abandoned villages scattered across the land. <laughs> It would be sad if the natural tragedy that has happened to many other Macedonian villages happens to Vevchani as well. The country's population is shrinking as people leave for opportunities abroad and its birth rate has plummeted as women increasingly delay starting families in pursuit of their education and career. Some 50 years ago, women used to have more than four children. Today, many choose to have just one or two. What's more, the country's elderly population is rising. The decline in the birth rate, along with the problem of an aging population, has thrown the country's economy and sustainability out of balance. Spiro Ristovsky, the country's labor and social policy minister, says raising the fertility rate on average nearly 1.5 children per woman is a necessity for this tiny Balkan nation. A United Nations Population Fund, or UNFPA, report predicts this country of 2 million could lose 15% of its population in the next 40 years. As we're developing a society, we cannot afford to lose population. And so, the government has come up with a bold strategy to make sure that that doesn't happen and they're using a classic motivator, money. In 2008, the government began paying families to have a third child, 120 euros a month for 10 years, more than a third of the average monthly income. For Amelia, this offer was about to force her to question her own priorities. As one of the only two women in her village to attend university, Amelia waited to marry until she was 25 years old. In the past, girls used to marry after high school at 18, and that's it. After she had two daughters, Amelia landed a job as the finance manager for the local hospital. Her husband, Vlado, opened his own business. He then wanted to have a third child, a boy. The most important thing in the family is the birth of a boy. So that there is someone to go out to make money to support the house. Amelia agonized over the decision whether or not to have another child, something she feared could interfere with her pursuit of a more modern lifestyle. But tradition won out as the government campaign tipped the scales. 
It would be bad and sad to forget and see our heritage erased and destroyed. How can I contribute? I can only give birth to a child. In 2011, Amelia gave birth to a boy, Yupcho. But on the other side of the mountains in Skopje, the capital of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, another woman, Tatiana Loparski, is not persuaded by the government's financial incentive. The government thinks that if he's going to give to somebody 120 euro per month, he's going to have their child. The expenses are much more than 120 euro. As an only child herself, Tatiana was accustomed to privilege. She graduated from college with a journalism degree, worked as a television news anchor, and later as a spokesperson in the cabinet of the country's president. A few years ago, she started her own public relations company with 10 employees. For her, raising children is more than just providing the basic needs. I want my child to have everything, in fact, to have good education, proper life, to have everything that everybody else has it. Tatiana sends her daughter to a private kindergarten. It's not free. And if you have to have a quality education, you have to give additional money for private lessons, like additional for English, for German, for everything. The added financial burden of another child now would be too much, she says. She feels lucky to even have a job. 35% of people are not employed. A big number of people are in poverty, so that's the problem. I, I think that uh, the government should invest money in factories to make another kind of employment policy. And that's how they will have more, uh, more population. A recent report from the state statistical office shows that the number of families with a third child rose some 13% in just one year. But whether or not these births are related to the government incentive policy is still too early to say. Deciding family size is a complex issue involving many factors and should not be exclusively financial, says UNFPA's Tatiana Sikoska. If we look at the story of Emilia and story of Tatiana, we would see that the persistence of the tradition, the culture, which is more uh, prevalent in rural settlements, is a strong pushing factor for a woman to decide to go for two, three, four or more children. Helping communities thrive could be one of the solutions to the country's population problem and salvation for its dying villages, some 150 of which are entirely abandoned and more than 450 are at risk of becoming totally empty. Vevcheni mayor Pero Leski hopes that his village can escape that fate. He believes it's important to both grow the economy through tourism and grow the population. He welcomes a government campaign and hopes that the initiative will help raise the village fertility rate. This means that our population will grow and will have more workforce to improve conditions here. As for Amelia, helping her village thrive and ensuring its history lives on is something she's proud to be a part of. She has no regrets about having another baby. As for me, once I had Nyukcho, I feel like I have found my inner peace. Tradition was not built in 10 days. It took many years and many generations who passed it on to the future ones.